All right, everyone, today we're going to do another Valentine's Day card. I have a standard size folded card, and it's folded from the top. Um, I'm using this little raccoon. It is actually from the Imaginese um, apple cider collection. It's just the raccoon. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black to stamp it, and I ended up having to do it a couple times to get a good image. Um, I have a re-inker for my ink pad, but I haven't done it yet, so I guess I should do that soon. But, um... So here I'm doing some Copic coloring and I sped it up because it took about 15 minutes to do it and I wanted to just be able to show the whole process without you having to really sit through the whole thing. Um, I had to get my a phone so I could see where, it, you know, what coloring the raccoon is because I couldn't remember if it was lighter or darker or exactly where the where the different the different shadings really were appropriate to be. So I used a couple of different Copic markers here. I'm using um, the B02, which is Robin e Robin's Egg Blue, and I used that solely for his eyes. I used C3, which is um, Cool Gray number three, and C5, which is Cool Gray number five. And I also used um, a Zig Writer in Pure Black, and you'll see that um, later on in the end, but I did it to make his eyes darker. And then I used um, a Jelly Roll white pen to just do the um, a little bit of highlighting around the white part of his eyes to give it a little bit of a twinkle effect. So you'll see here, I haven't done any extensive Copic coloring training, I guess, but I'm slowly learning and doing kind of my own experimenting, but you can see the different things here. All right, I'm getting ready to finish up here, and I'll show you the final final end, and that's where I put the white right in the eyes. There you go. You can see my little raccoon. It's got a little bit of shading, a little bit darker in certain spots, a little bit lighter in others, and then I just use white cardstock, so I just left part of him white. I could have used, you know, a little bit of color to bring in a little bit of shading around the white, but I don't have, I probably have about 40 Copic markers. I don't have a ton, um, considering how many there are. That's not that many. So I, I need to expand my collection a little bit before I really um, have the full array of colors I need. I'm just cutting around him here. I'm getting as close as possible. And then I'm going to use the Zig Writer. Um, I don't have a black Copic marker. I mean, of all things, it probably should be one I have, but I don't. Um, so I'm using the the bigger end of my Zig Rider to to um, to mark the edges black so it looks more finished. All right. Then I decided to take um, I found these cool little tags by Archivers. It's less than a mile from my house, and I love that store, so I use it a lot. And these are called Chic Tags. Um, and they're Valentine's speech bubbles. There's a lot of different ones in here, and you'll see me start to pull them out here. <clears throat> Two of them had hearts on them, and the rest of them were just pink, red, and black. So they're actually pretty versatile to use at different times of the year. Just going through here. I'm trying to figure out spacing with what works on this card. These stickers are um, the Lily Bug Lily B Design ABC stickers. It's the one that coordinates with the handmade collections. I love these stickers. I'll probably go buy more, but I use them all the time. And there's so many different ones on this one sheet of paper. There's eight different colors in this one on this one piece that you can buy. I'm just using my X-Acto knife to kind of get the spacing. Right, I'm going to put, you stole my heart, but with the heart, it's going to be a little, it's going to actually be a heart, not spelled out. I have, um, this box is just a random box of different embellishments that I have. Some of the things, like you see those stars right on top, and then the heart that I'm searching for, those were actually things I cut out with my Cricut months ago for another project, and the heart wasn't big enough for what I needed, so I just stuck them into my box of random embellishments and it's just it's actually cut out of adhesive vinyl so it's a sticker already and it's kind of glossy looking because it's a um, 
it's adhesive vinyl, so it's got kind of a gloss, a shiny part to it. Otherwise, I would have used glossy accents over just a regular piece of, of red cardstock. All right, so I've got my raccoon and my, scent, my sentiment done, so I'm just trying to figure out the background to the raccoon. And I'm using the 6x6 pad um, by SEI. It's the Corinne collection. And I'm going back and forth trying to figure out which colors I want. They had different patterns, and I was trying to find a pattern that wasn't... I wanted to have pattern because it was going to be just a simple background, but I wanted, um, I still wanted it to have a little bit of, of color to it. So you'll see me go back and forth here trying to pick out what I wanted. At least you kind of get to see what's in the collection by me flipping through, figuring out what I want. And I keep all my scraps with my 6x6 pads. Um, you saw a moment ago the little envelope that's stuck in the front of my 6x6 pad. I think it's a 5x5 five five envelope, and I just um, fold the flap in and put the, the name of the 6x6 pad on the front of it and um, stick all my scraps in there. That way I can always find them. And then I put a rubber, just a loose rubber band around the outside to hold it all together. This punch is an EK success punch. It's Swiss cheese is the name of it. And I just punched across. I was debating on that other Fisker's punch, but I ended up going with the Swiss cheese one. I just punched across the entire bottom, and then um, I'll trim down the paper here in just a moment. Again, I ended up going back and picking a different color for the background instead of the stripes. But this background is cut to be just an eighth of an inch smaller all the way around, and then the um, smaller than the card base, and then the, the lighter piece of pattern paper on top is cut to be another eighth inch. So the, the red pattern is um, four by five and a quarter, and the white pattern is um, three and three-fourths by five inches. So there's just an eighth of an inch border around all the way around. And I'm just rounding the top corners of all three pieces, the card base and the tube pattern pieces. I ended up running out of space on my camera and I didn't realize it till afterwards. Um, so you won't see the very, very end where I completely put it together, but I'm putting, I put on the speech bubble and the raccoon first, just using some foam adhesive. Well, actually, I'm sorry, I put down the red piece first, just using some photo mounting squares. I have a ton of them that I got from Tuesday morning for, I think it was 30 cents a package, so I'm just using them up on different projects. So I put the red piece down, then I put my raccoon and my speech bubble on the white pattern paper using adhesive, um, foam adhesive. And then I just go back here. After I get this placed on, then I'll go back and actually put the, the white pattern piece down on top of the red piece. I like the Swiss cheese dots at the bottom. It gives it just enough to where you can see the pattern below, but without it being, I mean, under it, but without it being distracted. I still haven't used the Fisker's punch I had sitting out a moment ago. I just got it for Christmas. I haven't used it yet, but I'm looking for a product to use it on, so you may be seeing it soon. Yeah, that I'm using the same foam adhesive squares to put the white pattern piece on top of the red. And this is the last step to the card. It cuts off here, but um, that's it. Thank you for watching. Happy crafting.